So, uh, so up next we have Matt with Matterport who's going to share with us why they matter when it comes to capturing real world 3D content. Take it away, Matt. Hi everyone. I'm Matt Bell. I'm the founder of Matterport. Now our goal is to make capturing real world content in 3D as easy as taking a photograph. Now, I was at the uh, Silicon Valley Virtual Reality Conference last week. It, it basically is to virtual reality what this conference is to augmented reality. Now, I've noticed that, that um, attendees and exhibitors at both of these conferences both face the same problem, which is that creating 3D content is very hard. It's in the realm of painting where you have to go to a special school, go through a special training program, and after a couple of years, you're capable of creating this, this special 3D content. And even then, the content creation process is slow and difficult. We want to take 3D content creation from the realm of painting more into the realm of photography, where anyone has a device that, that they can carry around and quickly capture the world in 3D. And so what we've done is used similar hardware to what Jeff talked about with Occipital to allow people to capture 3D snapshots of the world and automatically stitch them together. So I'm going to show a quick demo here. So this is an office that was captured in about an hour using a Matterport 3D camera. So this is traditionally how people get to see buildings as a floor plan. But with Matterport, you're actually getting a full color 3D model. So you can see we're, we're essentially deleting the ceiling here through back face calling and, and floating above the space. But we can also hop in and walk around. You can also do things that you would not do in a real office. I don't know, maybe, depends on where you work. So this very much is something that if you were a 3D animator and they said, hey, guess what, you need to make this office, and it's got to be like accurate down to every little detail, every little you know, thing sitting on every desk. You know, this would just be a massive and, and terrifying task. So not only have we made that easy, we've also made it really fast. And that way, if, you, if you're a 3D content creator, you can focus on creating fantasy content, essentially creating ideas that you have and turning them into, into 3D models, Copying the real world is no longer a chore. It's simply something that can be done quickly. I should point out all these models are uh, dimensionally accurate, so you can basically pull down measurements off of them. You can also make annotations on them. And these, of course, stay spatially situated. So as you move around, they're all, they're all in place. And so essentially, these are annotation layers, augmentations that go on top of this, this 3D model. And that'll become important later. So let's uh, hop back to the presentation. So how do we make all this possible? You know, here you're seeing the underlying structure of one of these automatically created 3D models. So this is what the Matterport camera looks like. You'll see the familiar PrimeSense devices in there. Um, our camera sits on a tripod. It'll spin around in 20 seconds and essentially make a 3D panorama. And then as you move the camera from spot to spot, the iPad that you use to control the camera stitches all those 3D panoramas together in real time. So you can see my coworker there is essentially seeing the map of the building that he's scanning emerge as he goes. The reconstruction process involves solving a giant 3D jigsaw puzzle. Every time a new capture comes in, it's aligned to the previous capture. Do that enough times, as you go, you're building a full model of the space that then gets turned into a 3D mesh. So this camera is very much targeted at uh, professionals. You know, it's, it's available now. It's $4,500, which is dirt cheap if you're a professional and way expensive if you're a consumer. So you can think of this as like the digital SLR of 3D capture. It gives you really high quality 3D models of large spaces really quickly and very accurately. However, 3D sensing is coming to your pocket. Um, the two projects on the top here, uh, one is Intel's RealSense. 
Uh, the, strangely, they didn't have it in, in their booth here, but it was demoed at CES. It's a 3D sensor that's embedded in a tablet. So you now have handheld 3D scanning of, of objects and spaces. On the top right is Google's Project Tango. It's a phone with a built-in 3D sensor. On the bottom, you have the uh, occipital structure sensor, as well as the Lazy Eye, which is a Kickstarter project that's very close to meeting its funding goals, that is an accessory that you can snap onto a phone. And so you can see you have both accessories to mobile devices that have 3D sensing capability, as well as mobile, mobile devices themselves that are coming out soon with that capability. We got our hands on one of the Tango devices, and given that most of the magic of Matterport is actually on the software side, we were able to port our software stack to run off the, the data that the Tango system is able to gather. So here is my uh, co-founder wandering around his garage with a, a Tango phone, and this is the model that he was able to build in just a couple of minutes. So when you see this, you realize that 3D capture is going to become a pervasive consumer activity. People are going to be grabbing the world around them in 3D. So let's talk about what's going to be possible with that. So one of the professional use cases that's come up a lot, and one of our biggest current market segments, is remodels and staging of spaces. So here's an office that we've captured. You can see the underlying uh, 3D model of the space there. And what we're going to do is we're going to simulate a remodel of this office using the 3D data that we captured, and then we're going to walk around that office and get a sense for it. So first off, the carpet's kind of light and insipid, so we're going to try putting a darker carpet color in here and see what that looks like. So we can now move around and get a sense for how that carpet appears as you explore the space. However, it's a bit of a bold pattern, so maybe we'll tone it down a bit. This is a venture capitalist office after all. So we now have, now have the more plain carpet pattern. Now let's go out to the entryway and look at, um, say, where the guests will come when, uh, when they enter. Now this wall is a bit dull in color. We could brighten it up, try putting a bright orange in there. And we're directly editing the 3D model here. Separately, given that this is 3D, we can start to collage digital 3D objects into the real 3D model. We can now experience what this space would look like with digital furniture being added in. Now, right now, someone's experiencing this in a web viewer, but you can imagine them walking around the actual space with a mobile device that registers against the model of that space and allowing them to see exactly what the new space would look like after the transformation takes place. So in walking around the show floor yesterday, I noticed um, there's, there's a lot of uh, source material where people are essentially showing off real estate using augmented reality. We want to make anyone who's doing this, we want to make their life easier. Um, you don't have to create this 3D content manually anymore. If the building already exists, you can just go through and quickly create a 3D model of the space. It'll be more realistic than the diagram you see here, and also visually complete. This is something I saw about um, a month ago when I was in uh, Barcelona. It was a tour of one of the Gaudí houses. Um, there was an augmented reality app where you could essentially see the inspirations for all the rooms in the houses. However, it wasn't actually lined up to where you were. Um, however, with something like Matterport, you could scan the building, build a 3D model of it, and then align all your augmented content to that 3D model, allowing people to have this picture-perfect aligned experience of the augmented building. You can also take this real-world content and pull it into games. Um, this is one of our uh, customers, Mercio. Uh, they scan houses in various other locations and turn them into uh, game content. This is essentially making the level creation process extremely fast and straightforward. There's also a range of other consumer use cases that I think will become very common once people have 3D capture devices in, your, in their pockets. 
So for example, you'll be able to capture what your house looked like last Christmas and then relive it walking through it. Um, you can also say, if you're staying in a fancy hotel or if you see an interesting exhibit, you'll be able to capture that in 3D and potentially bring up metadata that's tagged or aligned with that 3D model as you're exploring the space. You can also scan your room, send it to your friends, get advice about redecorating, and then view that advice spatially situated in the room. You could also shop for furniture as you walk around your room, dragging and dropping furniture into your real space and seeing it overlaid in 3D with proper occlusion. So finally, is this 3D ecosystem ready? All of these devices are very new. They're just hitting the market. Well, all the pieces are in place. The professional capture devices are already available. Um, the automatic reconstruction processes that you're seeing with what we're doing, what, uh, with what Occipital is doing, and others are making the capture process easy. If you want to see how hard it used to be, look up how laser scanners align. And also, the 3D web technologies, uh, Unity and WebGL, and the very powerful GPUs that let you view a half a million poly count model on an iPad, those are bringing a level of ubiquity to 3D that YouTube was able to create back in the mid-2000s. And that means that 3D content will be able to be shared and experienced easily by, by a large number of people. So we see pro and hobbyist 3D capture happening now. And I would expect that within a year or two that you'll see broad adoption of 3D capture devices that fit in your pocket. Thank you very much for listening. If you have any feedback or interest in particular use cases, we're a startup and that means we're fast and nimble, please come talk to me afterwards and we can potentially integrate your suggestions into our product roadmap. This, by the way, is the largest scan any of our customers have ever done. This is all of San Mateo City College. I think it's around 40,000 square feet. Thank you. How many photos did you um, <laughs> So first question was how many photos? How many photos? Well, uh, you can think of them as 20 second sweeps, like every time the camera spins. And I think it was about 300, which means they were probably there for about six hours. Okay. Is it more like LiDAR scan or photogrammetry? Um, it is structured light. It's, it's neither, basically. It, there's an infrared camera projecting a random dot pattern all over the space. You can't even see it. And then there's a, um, or an infrared projector that projects this dot pattern. And then an infrared camera that views it from a different angle and then looks at the, um, how much the pattern is distorted from that different angle and does stereo matching against that to determine distance of each patch in that image. Sure. Tell us about a future where you've got cool automated tools to clean up these models and make them more dynamic. So. We already have cool automated tools to clean up the models. Um, uh, windows are getting filled in. Small holes are getting filled in. Um, there's definitely going to be a lot more to come. Um, so there's going to be more tools with regard to auto segmentation of models. So automatic, you'll be able to automatically delete all the furniture and things like that. That's coming very shortly, actually. Um, recognition of specific objects. Yeah, essentially, there's a whole range of those things that are going to come out over the next couple of years. And so you'll, you'll move from something that's essentially a, a giant collection of polygons to something that's like semantically deep and interesting and interactive. In the front. I have a, a two part question. First off, this is going to work with Unity, so you can just bring this in and mm -hmm. create a game world that we can go through. Mm -hmm. Correct? Yes. Um, our viewer is written in Unity. So yeah, it, it already works with Unity. And the models that this creates are in OBJ format, so you can just import those right in. And what, what is the difference between your device other than the price? Yeah. What, what is the difference between your device other than the price and the gentleman that uh, spoke up before I was talking about the one that attaches to our tablets? Sure. Um, so the Matterport camera is designed for rapid scanning of large spaces. Um, I don't want to speak for you, Jeff, but if, if I were going to do a quick synopsis, you're more about scanning of objects and, and, and much smaller spaces. Yeah, it's, it's like mobile versus like 
tripod scan, basically. Could I use yeah. that device for larger spaces also? Theoretically, you could, but there's more software needed to be able to do it. Whereas I think where they're at today, you can use their software today and, and scan larger spaces. But I think that we need to see a few more steps in uh, mobile capture before you can use it as, a, as an alternative to what they're doing. Is yours uh, more accurate for a smaller? Uh... No, I think the accuracy is very comparable. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I will say in terms of the software side, so although we make a standalone camera, our software stack is portable. So you saw it running on the Tango device, which is handheld. We plan on putting our software on every single mobile device with a 3D sensor, occipitals included. And so we're going to bring that 3D reconstruction of spaces to every possible platform out there. And, and then just a real, real quick question uh, that kind of follows up uh, a little bit. Um, could, could you share with us, since there are people that are coming out in the space, and since you said you guys are more on the magic of the software, mm -hmm. um, when you have Floored and these others that are taking laser scans and then doing the back end optimization for this, how do you differentiate yourself from some of these others that are coming out, minus, of course, the fact that you're making an actual scanner? Sure. So uh, Floored specifically is more of a services business, so they don't sell cameras. They have their own high-end uh, scanner with an SLR stapled on top. And then they do extensive manual processing and cleanup. So they're more of a tool for like very high-end real estate where you're paying, like I think it's over a dollar per square foot, to have a um, very cleaned, staged model um, that is then viewed online. You know, we see ourselves more as uh, 3D reconstruction for the masses. Cool. Thank you, Matt. Definitely. Well, thanks, Matt and Matterport.